Good morning. It's February 9th, 2016. It's 6.31 a.m. and I like to go over a few changes that I made to this little website that I developed uh, that pulls in different websites discussing carbon nanotubes. And let's uh, show you how I changed the folder to this icon. Down here uh, on the right hand side you see what a regular folder icon looks like. Well, not this, that's an mp3, but these three right here are what your normal folder icons look like on your desktop. I changed the medicine ball and I changed, uh, I created this icon in paint. So if I right click the folder, go to properties, go to customize, change icon, go to browse, my desktop, the folder is, what well, already is looking at the icon, but if it wasn't, you would click on the folder and then wherever your ICO file is, which is if you save any picture as a bitmap in Paint, a BMP file, and then you just right click the BMP file and hit rename and change the .bmp to .ico, then you'll have an ICO file. And you want it to be um, 100 by 100 pixels or as close as possible. You don't want it too big. So you could also resize it in Paint as well. And then uh, when you find your ICO file, click Open, OK, Apply, OK. And then you'll have your icon. Something that's kind of strange that I don't understand if I open this is that I, here's my, my bitmap file. When I right click my bitmap file and hit Open with Paint, you can see that up here, this star at the upper left has a red color. But for some reason, when I changed this image right here to uh, the ICO file, the red coloring turned black. And I tried multiple times to change it so that I'd have red, and I don't know why, but it won't. So there's something strange going on with that, and I have no clue how to fix it. Now, um, these are all the files that are inside this folder. Uh, that's called Auto Scroll Pages CNT. I have one color star dot bitmap, which I just showed you. It's right down here with red, purple, blue, and green, and a yellow star in the middle. I've got all these external pages: 1.html, 2.html, all the way to 13.html. I have a blank .html, and I have my main page, which is open underscore cnt and body underscore index .html. Normally, when you make a website your uh, home page or opening page, you'll probably just name index .html. But I usually elaborate with more details uh, about what the actual website pertains to. Um, one thing I could do to make this uh, a little easier to look at would be to right click it. Right click in here, new folder, and I've done this before. Call that folder box, and just highlight everything except your home page that opens the whole project, and just drag all that stuff into the folder called box. Here's all my MP3 audio files of me reading those different websites about nanotubes. Where's my box? Right there. Put all that in box. And I've got a little JPEG, but that. Where's my color star ICO? There's a couple of ping image files. Um, what's this? Oh, these are some videos that I made. I don't necessarily need to keep, but I'll put those in box too. And finally, my color star dot bitmap image. So now, to close this, when I open up my folder that says auto scroll pages CNT and I, I open it up, it's very obvious that this is the page that I double click on to open the whole project. Instead of looking at you know, 20 or 30 files all over the place, I put those 20 or 30 files inside of box. Now remember, because I put all this stuff in a new directory, I have to change my path that points to all those individual things. So I have to hit my, uh, so I right click my open CNT and body index.html. Right click it, hit edit with notepad. Now let me fix 
let me fix all my directories to include box, my paths in other words. So the first thing I need to do is in the link for the shortcut for the shortcut icon, I need to add box and a forward slash to that path so that it's pointing to that. Save it. I don't need to worry about the internal styles. Um, I don't need to worry about the on-click event. I don't need to worry about the title. I do need to worry about the AREF link because it's going to point to that one.html and since it's in box you have to put box and forward slash. On-click, I don't need to change the on-click event. I don't need to change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I mean I'm going to highlight box forward slash right click and copy so I don't have to keep typing box forward slash over and over again. The only thing I need to do is put that box in front of my AREF everywhere my AREF is pointing to a one.html uh, or two.html and so on and so forth I have to add the box to the path. Since uh, open CNT and body index.html is outside of the box, I have to add it to point to the other stuff that is inside of the box. Okay. Nine. Title AREF. Oh, this isn't, this is going straight to a website here. 11, 12. This is going straight to a website. And I don't need to do anything to the iframe because that's not pointing to anything initially. Okay, so now let me run this and see uh, see if I've fixed it or if I have anything else that's broken because of the path change. Run. I'm going to launch it in Chrome. Okay, so far so good. Let me click one of these. Okay, currently I'm not online, so you see the page open up here, but you don't see the Wikipedia in the background. Um, this link opens up my one.html web page in this iframe, and I've done some things to the page. I've included some buttons down here at the bottom that scroll the page. I've included this uh, audio tag because I read the page and so you can hear the reading of the page. I've created this highlight area so as this page scrolls and you're reading it you can focus on just the part that's in the highlighted area. Um, scroll page gives us a continuous slow scroll of the page. It continuously moves up very slowly. Scroll highlight moves up in chunks the exact height of this highlighted area and there's two pieces of code that does that. One is the function that this button actually uh, calls and the other uh, is the fact that whatever I set the height to this highlight area the function that controls the scroll highlight has to have the same height. So if I change the height of this yellow transparent area that covers um, a certain portion of the reading area, I have to change the function that this button um, uses as well to equal whatever the height is of this. Stop scroll button stops the scroll that this causes, the continuous scroll, and I already told you that this basically uh, turns on the audio of me reading the page. So let me get to the code like I said, I'm not online right now. If I go online, you would see a Wikipedia web uh, page pop up underneath here. Um, of, I want you to notice the navigation here 
on the left I have a, an ordered list and I've colorized a style in the OL which is the ordered list tag which makes all the numbers here turn white and the only thing that makes that bad is that when you highlight the list item that's enclosing this uh, link it's it's white so you can't see the number anymore so probably choosing white to be the ordered list number might not have been the greatest idea I guess it doesn't really make a whole bunch of difference but um, I also want to show you how right now all my list items here are the exact same height so it gives it a nice uh, uniform appearance. I want to show you also um, the tooltip. When I hover over top of one of the list items, you see that little pop-up that actually says exactly what the link says? Well, when I minimize this page so that it's not f the full width of the screen, there's a few things that happen when you have the list items, all of these uh, rounded rectangles the same height, some of these words will flow out of the list item because it runs out of room. And so there's a few settings and there are a few things that I can do. I can um, have overflow hidden so that when the so that as this list item gets crunched more narrow, when these words flow down instead of flowing into the next list item they stay hidden as if they're disappearing behind the next list item and since you don't see all the words by using the title attribute to the list item itself I get the tooltip that lets you see the entire title that you would click on because some of these words are going to disappear so let me uh, minimize this to half the size of the window so that you can understand what I'm talking about. Um, like two, if you read what the list item words are, it says studies say carbon nanotubes as dangerous as asbestos and that's all that you see. But if I just hover over the list item itself and the pop-up comes up, you can see that there's actually more. Study says carbon nanotubes as dangerous as asbestos dash scientificamerican.com and in parentheses 5 minutes and 11 seconds that's an indicator of how long the audio mp3 snippet is of me reading the actual page in the background um, so again the attribute to the list item called title gives us that tooltip um, let me just go on and read the code for this particular page from the top to the bottom. There's the opening HTML tag and it's it's not a huge page. There's the bottom closing HTML. Here's a bunch of notes I gave to myself for other stuff. And right before the end of the HTML code there's the end of the body and here's the iframe itself this is the code for this iframe right here that pulls all of these external web pages in here by clicking a navigation link over here on the left so the code for the iframe iframe ID equals TV name equals TV height equals 90 percent and there's the end iframe uh, tag um, the ordered list right before the iframe that's what all of this is that's how you get this these numbers to the left one two three four five six seven and, and uh, I think up to thirteen yeah all the way up to thirteen the ordered list encloses my navigation so there's the end of the ordered list and if I go back up to the beginning of the body there's the beginning of the body and there's the opening ordered list tag well this is the body elements. Let me start up at the top though and go from the head all the way to the body. Again I already showed you the ending HTML tag. Here's the head. This link right here allows me to put this shortcut icon up in the browser tab. Link rel equals shortcut icon href equals box forward slash nanotube.jpg type equals image forward slash x icon. 
you can't really tell what it is, but it's actually uh, an image of a carbon nanotube, kind of diagonal. Then I have the title tags here with the words CNT and the human body inside, and that gives us the title in the browser's tab right next to that image icon. Now I have an internal style that goes from this purple tag all the way to that purple tag, and then that's the end of the head before we start digging into what all is in the body. So let me go over the style of this page really quick. I've given the body a margin and a padding of zero pixels so that no matter what browser I'm using, it will still uh, appear the same. Here's my OL, which is this ordered list that creates my navigation over here. And uh, the style for the OL is right here, margin left, negative 35 pixels. If I take that and misspell it, then what happens, and refresh the page, what happens is I get this uh, it kind of tabs over a little bit and I wanted to take advantage of the space so I wanted to force it to the left 35 pixels which is why I had to use a negative number to force it because it didn't want to just if I would have just put margin left zero pixels I would still have this tab you know gap over here and I didn't want that so margin left negative 35 pixels forces it over uh, text align left margin top zero pixels so that the ordered list is as close to the top as possible. Color white is what gives me the numbers in a different color. If I said um, color red, that would look really ugly, red on blue, but you see that's what actually changes that number. And also because I changed it from white to red, when I highlight these list items, the numbers don't disappear. They don't fade in because they're the same color. So what might make sense, since red is kind of an awkward color over top of blue, um, maybe maybe purple would be better. I could I could not colorize it at all. If I didn't give it a color setting, the automatic would be black and it would actually match the link itself. Uh, I, I still liked making the color, the number, a different color. So I'm going to go on ahead and leave it purple. Um, the font size is 15 pixels. I have something here called list style image. And from here to here is one statement. Those are not two separate statements. The whole statement is list out image colon Earl uh, parentheses and single quotes color star dot ping and then semicolon. Uh, we're just taking up two lines because if I open this up more you can see the single statement but I'm making it more narrow so that we can look at the two things separately. Um, I created this image right here, the same image that I used as my folder icon, it's 100 pixels by 100 pixels. I opened this in Paint and I resized it to like 10 or 15 percent of that size and made it smaller and hit Save As so that I would keep both the 100 by 100 and the smaller version and I called it Tiny Color Star Ping. Well, before I show you tiny color star ping, first I tried it this size. And if I remove the Z so that it actually um, pulls that image and I hit refresh, it's going to replace the numbers with an image. Ah, uh, yeah. I must not. Let me see. Let me go in here and see if color star dot ping is actually still in here. And I right click here and hit group by type. That way I'll have all my HTMLs together, my MP3s together. I have color star ping and tiny color star ping. Oh, I know what's wrong. You probably already figured it out. I forgot to add box box forward slash color star ping because I put all of these things in this uh, folder called box so in order to reach it I have to 
name box is the directory all those things are sitting in. Okay, so let me try it now. Look how huge. It just covers up the entire uh, list item. You can't even read the words. So the original color star ping was the same size that this is, the bitmap, that I changed into an ICO so that I could use it as a folder icon. Again, I opened this image in Paint and I resized it and then I named the new image Tiny Color Star Ping. I'm pretty sure. Let me look back in the folder again. Let me look for my ping. Yeah, right here. Uh, see, the original Color Star dot ping is 102 by 101 uh, pixels, and the Tiny Color Star Ping is 21 by 21, so it's smaller. So once I resized that image in paint and correctly named it here so that it would point to the small one not the larger one then when I refresh there you go there's the 21 by 21 dimension so this is just showing you different ways that you can use an ordered list an ordered list is going to give you numbers um, if you don't want to use numbers, you can use list out image and give yourself a tiny image. Uh, if you want to, your if you want to use numbers but you want them to be a different color than the rest of the text in your list item, you can say color whatever. Um, this is an important feature. List style position inside forces the image or the number to be inside of the list item. Um, I tried to show an example on another occasion what it looks like if it's uh, list out position outside and it did not, it just went away, it just disappeared. So I couldn't show the difference. I couldn't, sh I thought that it would push it way out here. Even when I take the margin left of 35 pixels off and there's that gap, it still wasn't uh, giving me what I expected. I expected the uh, image to either be on the inside of the list item or the outside, but either way, it just made the image disappear. So this was an important statement for me to have in order to see the image, period, list style position inside. Um, LI means list item. All the LIs are inside of the OL tag, the ordered list nests this li and this li and this li and this li and so on and so forth a bunch of these li's so here uh here's the style that i gave each list item a height of 60 pixels because they're all 60 pixels it gives this uh, page a nice uh, uniform appearance but, like I said, because of the uniform appearance, if some list items had more words than others in the A uh, ref link, let me uh, show you how horrible that looks if I misspell overflow hidden. Let me save it here and refresh the page. Can you see all of, the, all of these words just bleed? They just flow right out of the list item and flow right over top of the next list item. And you're looking at it like, what the heck? So it's important if you're going to use a list item for navigation and uh, if you're going to have them all the same height to use overflow hidden. Now let's say you don't want to use overflow hidden and you don't care if your list items are all the same height. Well don't give it a height and I'll show you if I Z and misspell height 60 pixels, don't give it a height. Let's refresh the page and what happens is each list item will expand to the height that it needs to be to fit however big the words are. So this is just another way to do it if you don't want to use the overflow and you don't care if the list items are all the same size or not. Whether you uh, do it this way or the other way, it's still kind of nice to have a tooltip. I used the tooltip because I did want the uniform height and because I did use overflow hidden I wanted that uniform look and since it makes the end of the words disappear my title allowed the user to see what they can't see so there's no loss of information there um 
font family is Arial. You can look, you can Google uh, font family, either CSS font family or <coughs> HTML font family, and you can get lots of different, you know, cursive or thick, or you can just get all kind of different ways that you want your text to look. Um, I have a background color of pound 3cc. That's this pretty blue-green aqua kind of color. And again, you can look up HTML color codes and come up with all kinds of different hues and shades. The, each list item actually has a border, 5 pixel silver outset. It's not really that easy to see. I guess if I change this 5 pixels of silver outset to 15, you'll be able to see the border better. See, there's the border. But I think that's ugly having it that fat. But, you know, actually, if I wanted to, instead of using silver, use tan, which is the background color to this iframe over here. Um, I don't know if you like how that effect is, if that makes it too much of just those two colors. What if I take that 15 pixels back down to 5? Uh, yeah, I don't know. For some reason, I, I like the silver better, but the tan does at least go more with the um, iframe. But I don't want it that obvious, so I'm going to go back with the silver. I like it better like that. The list items have a padding of 10 pixels. If I change the padding from 10 pixels to 20 pixels, you'll see where that border of space is, that sponge of space. So pay attention to the space around the words before you get to the border. That It's going to get fatter. See that? That's what the padding is. But that's too much padding for my for my desire, so I'm going to go back to 10. Uh, we've got a width of 18%, these list items right here, which means when I stretch this window larger, you see this gets longer. If I open this up full width, we've got 18% uh, of the entire width of the page. And if I go very narrow, as narrow as I can go, Eventually, it starts to hide behind the iframe. Um, but if you look way down here, you can see that it's pretty narrow. And so from here to here, that's supposedly 18% of the width of the page. So using percents is nice because you get a, a fluid, it's called a fluid layout, that it expands and contracts. The sizes of the elements expand and contract depending on the size of your the width or, or, uh, or height of your window itself. And of course I always use border radius of 20 pixels because I like rounded corners. And again, th this uh, statement gives us a bit of a shadow around the list item. WebKit box shadow 2 pixels, 0 pixels, 30 pixels, 15 pixels, RGBA value 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.75. And here's just two other ways to say the exact same thing. Each one of these uh, statements, I think, satisfies a different browser. Um, so let's go down to the iframe. The iframe is this square over here to the right that's got the same color border as our list items do. I, what did I say that color was? Pound 3cc and it's got a tan background. The position is fixed so that as we move the scroll bar the only thing that we're moving is our navigation on the left. It has a top of zero pixels so that the iframe butts all the way up to the top of the window. Uh, it's got a setting of right of five pixels because depending on what browser I was opening this in, the um, blue-green border of the iframe would either fit inside or it might disappear behind the scroll bar. So I gave it this right of five pixels so that it would move 
five pixels away from the edge so that you would see the border all the way around. It's got a width of 72% for the same exact reason that uh, the LI had a width of 18%. It's so that the iframe will have a flexibility to be wider or narrower and uh, continuously fit the page alongside the list item without uh, without any problems until we get too narrow and at that and at that point you almost can't see the list item um, background color tan there's that border I told you border 15 pixels of pound 3 cc ridge border radius 20 pixels to round the corners and padding 10 pixels so that when I actually open a web page if I click on this nar nar carbon nanotubes in medicine wikipedia.org do you see that where the page is supposed to open? You can still see this tan all the way around. That padding of 10 pixels gives us that. If I misspelled padding of 10 pixels by putting a Z in front of it and refreshing the page and then clicking this, this is going to open up the entire page without seeing any tan at all. So that's a personal preference. You may want to see some of the iframe uh, padding background color. If you don't like to see it, then just don't put a padding in there. Just take this and delete it and don't use it at all. Uh, for whatever reason, I like to keep the padding. Probably looks better without the padding, but I'm keeping it. Um, then I've got an LI hover style that says background color white and color black so that when I'm hovering over these list items you see this color and it's only that color when I hover this stays white because I have an on click event that when I click the list item it changes the background color but as far as the hover goes it's only gonna ch so I could change this background color instead of being white I could change it to lime which might really be loud but uh, when I hover it's that and when I click the on click event is white so that gives us a little differentiation of the difference between the LI hover style and the on click event that changes uh, a color so yeah but I I don't want to make my page that busy so I'm gonna go back to the hover and the on click being uh, a background of white my A link, I gave a color of black, and my A visited, I gave a color of black. And the reason I did that is because some browsers give your link, in, uh, whether it's uh, before you visit it or after you visit it, a different color like blue and purple. And I didn't want those extra colors uh, on the actual text of my list item. Um, I wanted them to just stay black because I didn't want the colors to be that busy. I created a B tag, um, which if you see at the end of most of these that are still visible, it gives the time of the audio MP3 snippet of me reading whatever web page shows up in here. And so I wanted that number to be bolder than all the rest. So creating this B tag, I gave that B tag a style of font, a font weight bolder color black. I could have said font weight bolder color red and all of those numbers that indicate the times would be red but that's like red on blue just doesn't look attractive to me um, maybe I could change it to yellow that doesn't look too horrible until I click on something and then when the background becomes white it's very difficult to read yellow over top of white so I'm gonna go on ahead and put that to what it was originally black because that gives me the best contrast whether the background is the aqua color or whether it's white okay so that's all of the styles that this uh, opening page have has there's the end of the head and here's the body the elements in the body are, as I stated before, an OL tag there for ordered list. 
that's all these things over here and uh, that order list takes us all the way to the end right before the iframe and again the iframe is this square section to the right where each uh, external page opens up in um, so let's get to the list items because the ordered list has to have list items inside and each list item is going to give us a link to another page that's going to open up in the iframe. So here we have an on-click event. The opening list item tag goes from here to here. You know, you got the less than uh, sign here and the greater than sign here. And inside every list item is the link. And there's the link. The AREF points to a place. It opens it up in another place. It's got an on-click event and it's got uh, text that you actually click to make the link uh, happen. So back up to the list item. li on click equals style dot background color equals white. That's the code that gives me the list item background color when I click it and it remains white after it's been clicked. The title tag equals carbon nanotubes and medicine wikipedia.org 1939. That's the time in parentheses. So the on click event, everything in the double quotes is, is uh, going to happen with the on click event. And the two things that we have, well, actually, I apologize. The on click event is right here between these. Uh, between these double quotes with a um, ending semicolon. The on-click just changes the background color to white. This title is not part of the on-click event. This is just another uh, aspect of the list item. This uh, is what happens that gives me the tooltip when I hover over this list item and then that little bar pops up that says carbon nanotubes and medicine wikipedia.org. That's what the title does. It gives you a tooltip. Here's our link, our actual link itself. Here's the opening link tag, and down here is the closing link tag. And everything in between the opening and closing link tag uh, is the set of words that you click on. And I put the set of words that you click on to be the same words that the title shows. Because um, these words right here may disappear if overflow, uh, if overflow hidden makes them disappear, like, like they disappeared here, they disappeared here, they disappeared here. Well, I just copied and pasted that and gave it, a, uh, set it to the title so that it would be the tooltip so that the information the user could still see. Uh, we already went over that. Back to the beginning a ref though, that actually creates the link that you click. A ref equals box that folder I created forward slash one dot html so we're going to open up one dot html that's in the box folder and it's going to open up in the target of TV which is this iframe over here on click equals this dot style dot color equals black if I wanted to change the on click to the link to any other color I would do I could say red well that's going to look hideous but I'm just going to show you that the on click event uh, equals this dot style dot color equals red will change this to red when I click on it. I could change it to purple, green, any color I want. Um, it might have been monotonous for me to even put this on click event as black, but my basic reasoning behind putting it there is so that if I did want to make the change, the only thing I would have to do is change this color right here. All the rest of the um, code is already incorporated in my link tag. So I kind of did that for maybe future uh, style changes. Okay, again, that's what we click on to make the whole link functionality happen. And there's the end of the li tag itself. So you got uh, li tags nesting the link, which is the a ref tag. So let me get rid of the spaces. 
And I just do this exact same concept. I copy and paste this for every single one of my list items. And the only thing that's different is obviously they're going to all have a different uh, pop-up tooltip. They're all going to point to a different web page it's going to open up and they're all going to have a different uh, set of link text. The link text and the tooltip should be the same. And I do that over and over again until I get to the end, the last one. And so then I have the end of the OL, the end of the ordered list. After the end of the ordered list, I put my iframe in there. And I already read the code for that. iframe ID equals TV, name equals TV, ID equals 90%, end of body, end of HTML. So I went over the entire code for my page. I showed you how to change the color of an ordered list, list item, number. I showed you how you can use an image instead. Now what I'd like to show you is stuff about this page that opened up in here with these buttons and the audio tag. So let me go in. I'm done with this page so I can get out of there. So I want to go in here and in the box I want to uh, just right click one.html hit edit with notepad and just go over the single page that this link opens up. Okay so here's the code for this page. I don't need to show you this page uh, in the iframe. I could actually close out of this whole thing and run just the one.html by itself. So I'm going to hit launch in Chrome. Now you're not going to see the uh, navigation. You're just going to see this page that opened up in that iframe. But now this is how it opens up by itself. There's HTML. Here's our head. Notice I didn't need to put an image here or a title because this is going to open up in an iframe. I don't need to worry about that extra code. Um, I've got three scripts that are in, uh, I'm sorry, three functions that are nested inside the script tags. And again, we're in the head. So I have a function called page scroll, and everything that page scroll does is uh, nested inside these curly braces here. Window dot scroll by and then in parentheses and separated by commas we have 0 comma 1. So that's the horizontal and vertical scroll elements. I'm not doing any horizontal. I'm not scrolling from the left to the right. I'm scrolling from the top to the bo bottom or bottom to the top, you know, up and down. Um, so we have 0, no, no horizontal one, it's going to scroll in single increments, one increment at a time. Then I have something called scroll delay equals set timeout, and in parentheses we have page scroll. Uh, we're calling page scroll in single quotes with a comma and the number 520. The number 520 is uh, going to give us a very slow page scroll. The lower the number, the faster the page scrolls. So if I change this 500 to 100, then it would be scrolling every 100 milliseconds. Instead, I've got it scrolling every 520 milliseconds. Then we have this uh, next function. Oh, by the way, this function page scroll, uh, this button down here calls that function. When you click this button that says scroll page, it calls this single function and does that. This scroll highlight, however, calls this function. And this function is a copy and paste of the function above it, except we don't use the scroll delay part. I've got all that commented out. So this scroll highlight, the only, uh, co the only statement that's in it is window.scrollby 0 comma 200. So instead of scrolling by one increment at a time, this is going to scroll by 200 increments at a time. And this number 200 happens to be the exact height of this little uh, yellow 
highlight thing that I created, this highlight div. If I change this from 200 to 400 in the body, which I'll do right now, I'm sorry, not in the body, in the style, highlight. I created a tag called highlight, which created this yellow transparent highlight window. It's got a height of 200 right here. I'm going to change that to 400 pixels. So my style for this yellow bar is going to go from 200 to 400 pixels, and you'll see that in a minute. So therefore, I must change this page scroll to function accordingly. It has to match because the point of this function is that as this, uh, as you're reading whatever is on the page behind, you're going to read from here and once you get here, this is just another way to move the page. Instead of taking this scroll bar and moving the page down so that you could read the next section or have the next section underneath the highlighted area, when you click this, it's going to move it up. So when whatever's here, whatever line is here underneath the, the highlighted area, when you hit scroll highlight, it's going to show up up at the top underneath the highlighted area. It's going to be close to perfect. Um, so let me refresh the page so you can see how the highlight is going to go from 200 pixels to 400 there. So now I've actually increased my highlight area. And you'll see how this works when I actually go online and you see the web page that shows up behind all this other stuff. Um, then I have a third function that uh, says function stop scroll. And of course you probably guessed the red button here that says stop scroll. This button calls the stop scroll function. And this function, what it does is it uses the statement clear timeout and then in parentheses scroll delay. So it actually stops this continuous, when I hit scroll page and I get a slow continuous rising of the page, um, stop scroll will make that stop. If I hit scroll page and you get a continuous slow movement and then I hit scroll highlight, it's going to shove this up uh, this many increments and then uh, stop scroll will stop the scroll page. So you can click this one and you could click the green scroll page and then click the scroll highlight and just because I click the scroll highlight is not going to stop the function of the scroll page. And the only way you can stop the function of the scroll page from doing the slow continuous scroll is by hitting the stop scroll here. Okay. Um, All right, there's the end of the script that had the three functions. And here's the style to this particular page. Um, I zed a couple of things out, so I don't believe I need to keep them. I had a background color of black and a color of white. Since I zed them, I'm just going to delete them. It's nothing important to have. I have body of margin pixels, padding of zero pixels. I usually do that to the body of any page. I have this. Uh, tag that I created called soundbar and I don't have um, a background color or a border so you can't really see the element but my buttons down here at the bottom and my audio tag are enclosed inside of a div uh, or a tag called soundbar and the style to that soundbar section has a position of fixed, a width of 100%, a bottom of 0 pixels, and a padding of 0 pixels. So what that does is a position of fixed means is as I take my scroll bar here and move the web page that you can't see right now because I'm not online. Um, well, yeah, you've seen that little dinosaur guy. Um, it will not move these elements. These elements are fixed to the bottom of the page. Alrighty, then I have uh, a tag called audio. Well, that's actually my audio tag. I didn't create the tag, but I'm using the tag to style it. I had to give it a margin bottom of negative 10 pixels. If I didn't set a margin bottom of negative 10, this audio tag was going to float up a little bit higher than the buttons, and I wanted it to sit completely at the bottom of the page like the buttons did. So I had to do that, and I also gave it a width of 14, 140 pixels so that it would be about similar uh, length of the buttons. I could give all the buttons the same length and the 
audio tag the same length uh, to make it more uniform. This scroll highlight looks longer than this, so I'm going to say, I'm going to guess the width might be, let's go with 160. Let's go with audio of 160 and save this. And let me set all of uh, the classes of these buttons to 160 width as well, which the buttons uh, are using a class green and a class red. So let me say um, width 160 pixels for the dot green. And for the dot red, let me do the same thing, width 160 pixels. Now let's see how that looks. See now they look they look like they're all uh, well they are they're all 160 pixels of width, so it gives it a more uniform look. If you don't like that, you don't have to give it a width. You can let it stretch or um, contract just to fit the words on the button. So that's completely up to you. What happens is when you uh, minimize your page, as if you have a smaller device these items uh, flow underneath each other. I'm sitting here looking going, this red button is not as long as a green button. Why is that? And then I just looked up here, my dot red, I thought I typed 160, but obviously I typed 150. Let me save that, refresh. Okay, now, they, now they're all the same. The audio tag actually looks a little bit longer. I could take that audio instead of 160. I could put it at 150 and see if that looks a little bit. Oh, the only thing that really did was chop off a piece of this over here at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to with the 160 so that I can see the whole visual of this um, speaker thing. Okay, um, so that was the audio tag. My iframe style, which is the whole thing, has a width of 100%, so it takes up the whole page. And um, the height, I gave 9,000 pixels because if you don't set the height to an extra long height that will hold the entire page that loads into this iframe, um, it will only scroll so much and then it'll stop scrolling or it might not scroll at all. So for this particular web page I had to fool around with the height and I wound up uh, coming up with 9,000 pixels so that it would scroll the entire page and maybe even just a little bit more than the entire page before it would actually stop. Uh, so that's very important if you're trying to scroll an iframe. The height being really super long, whether you guess it at 20,000 pixels or whether you fiddle with it until you find how long you really need to set it to, it's important or, or the scroll, the scroll page uh, function won't even work. Dot green even though with HTML5 we don't have to create div ID equals or div class equals. Um, well, I guess you do still have to have a class or an ID because you're setting it to an element, a button or, or an audio tag or something. So this dot green class has a background color of green, a border radius of 20 pixels, a font size of 20 pixels, a color of white, and a width of 160 pixels. And I give this particular button that says scroll page a class of green so that that's the appearance that it has. I also created a dot red which means class red, background color of red, border radius 20 pixels, font size 20 pixels, color white, and width 160 pixels so that this red button would have uh, the styles that it needs to have. And there's my highlight tag that I created which creates this yellow uh, thing highlight area. It's got a position of fixed for the same reason that these things down here did. When I move the scroll bar I don't want this yellow section to move too. I want it to stay put. 
So it's got a position of fixed, a top of 100 pixels, because I don't want the yellow uh, highlight area to start until it's 100 pixels from the top, a height of 400 pixels, which from top to bottom of the yellow section, it's 400 pixels high, a width of 100% so that it goes across from left to right of the whole page. There's a border of thick yellow ridge, which is a, you know, a very light border. I, I don't even necessarily need a border at all, um, but I did give it one. It's got a background color of yellow, and what makes this a highlight instead of marking the text completely out so you can't see it is the opacity setting. If I took the opacity and set it to a very high number like 0.9, and refreshed it. Do you see how you can't see the di well you can kind of see the dinosaur but hardly? Well this doesn't really highlight my text. This basically covers my text up and makes it very difficult to read. Even though you can kind of see a little bit of a hint of what's behind it, it's not my uh, it's not what I'm doing. So I have to make this a smaller decimal. So point two worked okay in my opinion so that it's transparent. You could still see the yellow, but you could see what's behind it clear enough to understand. All right, so that's the end of the style for the page. There's the end of the head. Here's the body. Now here's that highlight tag that I created. There's nothing inside of it. It's basically just a highlighter section here. Beginning to uh, highlight, ending to highlight. That's all it is. Here's my sound bar tag that holds all these things at the bottom, holds the three buttons and the audio tag and forces them to stay down there. Right here is my first button in the sound bar. Input class equals green. That give, that give, these, both of these buttons have class equals green. Type equals button. On click, this first one that says scroll page, on click equals page scroll. That means it's calling the page scroll function that I already discussed up in the head. Up here. It's calling this function. And the value equals scroll page. The value is the words that you see on the button itself. Here's the second button. Input class equals green. Again, type equals button. On click equal, equals page scroll two. Value equals scroll highlight. So now we're talking about this button. When you click this button, it's going to call this function function page scroll to, which that's just going to scroll my text exactly how much it needs to scroll to put the next uh, set of text in this highlighted area. The last button I have is input class equals red, type equals button, on click equals stop scroll, and value equals stop scroll. So we're referring to the red button here. And the red button calls the stop scroll method right here. Okay, the last thing I have in soundbar is my audio tag. That's this tag over here that when you click it you're going to hear me read. Audio controls means uh, that all you see is the controls. There's other things that you can put in this opening audio tag. You can put um, autoplay. That way you don't, the user doesn't even have to click. As soon as this page opens, I automatically start reading. Uh, I don't necessarily want it to autoplay. You can put loop so that it'll just keep looping over and over again. Uh, I don't want that functionality but it is something that you can put in there. Um, I don't want to even sit here and waste a bunch of time on all the different things you can put up here. You could uh, look that up, audio tag, and you can uh, read about all the different attributes that can go with the audio tag. Inside the audio tags we have source. We have this right here. Source equals source uh, source src equals 1.mp3. Now, because this is the 1.html that's in the folder called box, and everything else is also in box, they're not inside any other folder, I don't put box forward slash mp3. 
I would only do this if inside of box I created another folder called audio and then I put all my mp3s in that folder at that point if I did do that then box wouldn't be box it would be audio forward slash one dot mp3 but I did not go through all those extra um, folder classifications I only have one folder of box that holds everything inside so my path is just immediately straight to the one.mp3 audio file. Uh, type equals audio forward slash mpeg. And here is an error statement if someone's using a browser that does not support the audio element. And it obviously says what I just said. So your, browser, your browser does not support the audio element. So there's the end of the audio control, this gray control right here. Here's the end of the sound bar that is holding them all together here at the bottom of the page and here is our iframe iframe now other um, videos that I did when I'd have an iframe my source would be just uh, an empty double quotes but in this scenario my page this particular page the only thing that it's doing is pulling a certain um, web page into it so I have a source and it's a web address and it's http colon forward slash forward slash en dot wikipedia dot org forward slash wiki forward slash carbon underscore nanotubes underscore in underscore medicine and all that's in double quotes scrolling equals yes of course we want our uh, iframe to scroll because my function to scroll the page and scroll the highlight is dependent on being able to scroll frame border equals zero and end of iframe end of body end of HTML so over and over again I would copy and paste one dot HTML and then I would go to another website that I wanted to refer to and I would put that address of that website in my iframe source and everything else in the iframe would be the same the scrolling and the frame border would be the same uh, my audio controls would change to another mp3 of me reading whatever that web page said um, my all of my buttons would be exactly the same nothing would change there my highlight would be exactly the same nothing would change there my body my head uh, all of my styles would be exactly the same so ideally I could take all these styles and put them in one external style.css file and instead of having these styles over and over and over again in every HTML 1 HTML 2 HTML all the way to 13 HTML I could link them like this I could link them with this in the head link rel equals style sheet type equals text forward slash CSS href equals and then I would just put the path which would not have any of this stuff it would just say href equals style.css because I'm not using any other folders but until I do that I'm not gonna mess with that right now um, so I went over all the code what I need to do now is I need to go online so I can actually sh let you see how this how it looks when the web page actually opens in the background. I don't know why, but I frequently have to go through this networks thing. I, I don't know when I shut this off and go offline it's gotta like do some kind of reconfiguring I have one of those wireless USB uh, things so that I don't have to actually plug my desktop into my internet um, my why it's called a wireless network adapter as you can read right now it has to reset it every time I go off offline well not every time I turn the computer off but when I actually turn it off because I don't want it to automatically uh, boot up don't want it to automatically go online all the time sometimes I like to run my computer and do stuff with the internet off so then when I go to put the internet back on it's got to do this whole thing all right um, 
I don't automatically I don't really want to automatically go online but for now I guess it doesn't matter if it automatically goes online and I don't want to be online I just right click and go off The reason I don't always like to be online is because sometimes even if I don't want automatic updates, it'll do it any damn way and it will uh, bog my computer down if I'm trying to do too many things and automatic updates is trying to take control of my computer. So I get pissed off and just go offline so that I can do what I'm doing without interruption. Alright, so now I already showed you all the code for this particular page, but um, now that I'm online, this one.html, the iframe links to this Wikipedia site, which if, uh, if this were not in the iframe, if Wikipedia, if I did a Google search in another tab, not in the i, this page is in an iframe, and I googled um, I don't know, kites. Okay, so now I got kites. Hello. Okay, let's say I go into the Into the Wind website. <laughs> This right here is what I'm putting in my iframe source. It's the address bar up here. So I would highlight this, right click it, copy it, and then right inside of these um, double quotes for the source, I would control V it to paste it. That's the source. So if I go back to this one.html and refresh it, instead of seeing the Wikipedia open here, you're going to see the Kites website. See? You're going to see the Kites website, and if I hit scroll page, you're going to see how it moves ever so slowly. And you can still use the scroll bar to make it um, go f faster, but it's kind of hard to tell because this yellow isn't that striking of a contrast over top of all these other colors but if I hit scroll highlight this is gonna go look look right here at the bottom of uh, right outside of the yellow highlight you see just a little bit of this red kite well if I click scroll highlight that is now gonna be at the top of the highlight area um, if you watch down here the blue kite just as the blue kite almost reaches the yellow highlight area, I'm going to click scroll highlight and that at that point, instead of being right before the yellow highlight area, it's going to be right inside of the top of it. So imagine that this is um, text that you're reading and as you get to a certain point you've read 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 and you're now here at the bottom of this and you want the next section to jump up here and stay in the highlighted area you hit scroll highlight and it's up here so now you're reading at the top so basically the only thing this is doing is minimizing your focal point uh, of wherever you're reading you can make that's why you can take this highlighted area and you could expand it or contract it to whatever uh, section you want your eyes to focus on um, and then the stop scroll right here as you can see it stops that automatic continuous um, scroll and if I just hit scroll highlight whatever's at the very bottom of the yellow section will be at the very top inside the yellow section so I'll hit scroll look at this pay attention to where you're at you're like at the halfway point of whatever this image is hit scroll highlight now the halfway point is now under the yellow. If you see here, uh, international, this, this little part right here is definitely underneath the highlight. If I hit scroll highlight, it's going to be about somewhere about right about there. And that's how that works. So if you were the kind of person who likes to read while the page is scrolling and not have to scroll, 
you use the scroll page button. If you want to just read what's in this section, and then when you get to the end of the yellow, hit scroll highlight, and the next section will automatically be right in that yellow section, you could do that. So this scrolls in chunks. Scroll page scrolls in increments, small increments, continuous. Stop scrolls stops the movement. And um, if I go back, I don't, I don't really need to keep the into the wind scenario. I just wanted to show you. I'm going to go back to my iframe. I'm going to put my insertion point right here, and I'm going to click Control Z once, and now it put back my original source, which is the Wikipedia. I'm going to save that in Notepad++. I'm going to refresh the page. Now Wikipedia is here. So now I'm going to hit Scroll Page to get the slow roll, and then I'm going to click uh, my audio background. Wikipedia, carbon nanotubes in medicine. Okay, I'm going to turn it down a carbon little. It's kind of loud. I'm going to take my headphones off. Researched in the fields of efficient drug delivery and biosensing methods for disease treatment and health monitoring. Carbon nanotube technology has shown to have the potential to alter drug delivery and biosensing methods for the better, and thus carbon nanotubes have greatly garnered interest in the field of medicine. Okay, so you could, if you noticed where I was pointing, sometimes when I'm reading, I'll make mistakes. Uh, I said have greatly garnered interest. The word is recently, but sometimes I get ahead of myself when I'm trying to hurry up with reading, and I'm reading a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different web pages. Sometimes I flub up, but for the most part, my reading is okay. Um, but but basically, what the point of this is. Uh, is I'm still learning um, about web page design. There's so much to learn. There's so much to learn about functions and what you could do to make a web page more visible or more um, easy for certain users. Uh, if putting a highlight section with different types of scrolls helps the user, makes life more convenient, makes things more hands-free or makes the user uh, more able to focus on small chunks of reading at a time instead of being overwhelmed by, you know, so much. Any of these things I'm just trying to make uh, more user-friendly. Um, listening to an article while you read it or listening to an article instead of reading it, you can actually learn better if you take an article and you read it out loud yourself. Uh, there's something to be said about it's kind of like making reading more hands-on. When you read out loud, sometimes you actually uh, retain more. And if you listen to yourself reading uh, for review, sometimes it helps you retain more than just reading and reading something over and over again, especially if you get to the point where you're finding yourself getting bored with a subject. Um, I know personally, when I get bored with a subject, I find myself reading the same paragraph over and over again because I, I know my eyes moved, but I thought, what the hell did I just read? And so doing something like uh, reading out loud, creating your own MP3s uh, so that when you go to review material, um, anything that you can do to help yourself remember stuff, especially stuff that may be boring to you, may be interesting, but also may be boring for whatever reasons. Uh, you have other things on your mind. These are just ideas to help you focus more and uh, help you possibly um, retain more. And like I said, I'm still learning uh, multimedia, so any new trick that I can find to add to a web page, um, I'm going to incorporate it and do a video on it and throw it out there. Maybe it could help somebody. Maybe it could make their website a little more interesting. Um, maybe not. Who knows? But that's what I've done here, and I've shown you. Uh, a web page design that I did in the past with a few little additions to it. Um, and so that's going to conclude this video. I'm going to try to dive into my Java book. I, I haven't been doing too much Java lately, so I think I need to get off web page design and get on my Java.